will also involve maintaining the fleet, will be awarded in 2019. And China's economy grew by 6.7% in 2016. It's a figure many countries would be glad of, but it's the world's second largest economy's slowest rate of growth since 1990. China is a key driver of the, of the global economy, and a growth slowdown is a major concern for investors around the world. Hello, thanks for joining us. Now, later today, Donald Trump will be sworn in as the 45th President of the United States. The billionaire businessman has gone from long-shot candidate to the leader of the world's biggest economy in just a year and a half. His supporters will now be hoping he can shake up the U.S. economy in the same way he shook up the presidential race. Now, it's been reported that the president-elect plans to run the U.S. government like a business. He wants to create 25 million jobs over 10 years and double the annual rate of economic growth to 4%. Well, Anne Franke is the CEO of the Chartered Management Institute and she joins us this morning. Anne, thanks very much for coming in this morning. Now, when the president-elect says he wants to run the US government like a business, what does he mean and how is that different to the approach by previous presidents? Well, I think what he means is he looks at um, America as America Inc. and himself as the CEO. Um, but it's quite interesting because if you look at best business practices, and let's take his cabinet for example. He's chosen the least diverse cabinet uh, since any president since Ronald Reagan. And in terms of business practice, uh, that can be quite risky. In fact, a, a recent report by the Association of Risk Professionals highlighted lack of diversity in business boardrooms as the number one cause of the 20 largest corporate implosions this century. So there are some risks that he needs to pay attention to if he's going to run America Inc. like the business with Donald Trump as CEO. So what advice would you give him? What would you tell him he needs to do? Well, I think a few things. Firstly, a more diverse and inclusive cabinet. He's got, frankly, too many uh, baby boomer, billionaire, white men, and not enough uh, younger people, people of color, uh, and, and women. Uh, so I think a more diverse, inclusive cabinet would be a good start. Secondly, I think looking at his own leadership behaviors, they don't exactly uh, ring of best practice. So um, the notion of a leader admitting he makes a mistake, for example, uh, that's essential for building trust. We don't get much of that from Donald Trump, quite the opposite. Um, equally, he's not particularly humble um, or inclusive and, again, um, likes to big himself up with words like bigly and uh, braggadocious. That's not exactly going to inspire unity or people to get behind him. And lastly, I would point out that if you look at his so-called employee engagement scores, which are the approval ratings, if you like, they are, in fact, the lowest since polling has begun 40 years ago at 40%. Okay, Anne Franca from the Chartered Management Institute. I'm very sorry we need to leave it there. We're short on time. Let's quickly just see how the markets are getting on today. And with Donald Trump's inauguration, the watchword in the markets is caution. We saw a real rally in the markets after he was elected. And now investors are kind of sitting back and waiting to see if he follows through on those promises of reducing regulation, cutting taxes, all the things that businesses could well like, some of the reasons why the markets were going up. Uh, we can see that we're just kind of hovering around there waiting to see what happens next. That's it from me. Back to you, Anita. Thanks, Rachel. Let's return to